Brothers and sisters, as we are about to begin, please make yourself comfortable and make sure your mic is muted. Your cooperation is highly appreciated. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good evening, I bid to the respected Dr. Raini binti Hassan. And to everyone joining Tech Talk, the first series, The Rise of Artificial Intelligence. Wherever you are, either on campus or at home, happy semester break. And we hope that you will find this talk beneficial, fruitful, and engaging. Before we proceed, let me introduce myself. My name is Arisha, and I will be your host for today. To begin the ceremony with the blessings, I would like to invite Brother Rashid to, le to lead the du'a recitation. Please welcome. This al -Fatiha. Alhamdulillah, you will be out of it. Mosolet was seller while she will feel a beer, you will go seven while a lady was off the edge by it. Long after Alayna, hit Matakawaisho Alayna, Bin Hosa in your Matikaya and Hammer Rahimin. Wabishwahlana, Sudurana, Vayasilana, Ugurana, Wahalo of Latin Milisalina, Yafko Kodina. ربنا زدنا علما نافعا وارزقنا فحما اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم فقهنا في الدين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين امين 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 يا رب العالمين thank you brother rashid brothers and sisters the Technology Division of the Good Society, IIUM, has ultimate missions to advocate technology development among the IIUM campus community. In this first talk series, we will be focusing on the rise of artificial intelligence, which reveals the importance of AI and how it may affect our lives. Since the emergence of artificial intelligence, or better known as AI, it is progressively wider impact on many sectors, society, environment, and also economy. It requires an assessment of its uh, effect on the achievement of the SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. Later in other series, we will talk more about technology, but in different fields, perhaps in music or agro-based, or maybe green technology or marine, maybe food technology and many more. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so without further ado, allow me to introduce our honorable guest. We are privileged to have Dr. Raini as our guest speaker today. Okay, so let me brief a bit about her for tonight's talk. Dr. Raini Hassan obtained a first class Bachelor of Science Honours Information Technology degree from Mara University of Technology, UITM in 2000. She then worked at Maxis Mobile Stadium Berhad as a software engineer and then continued studying at University of Salford United Kingdom in Masters of Science, Computer Science. She has been working at IIUM since 2005 with experiences in teaching artificial intelligence, C++ programming language, computer organization and architecture, and to name a few. Administrative Administratively, she is the head of the Computer Science Department at the Kulia of Information and Communication Technology, KICT. Uh, but before we start, just a little housekeeping as a message for everyone here. Please do not hesitate to leave your questions in the chat section as I will bring them up during the Q&A session, inshallah. All right, so everyone, please join me in welcoming Dr. Raini. Assalamualaikum, Doctor. Can you hear me, Doctor? Waalaikumsalam. I can hear you perfectly. Alhamdulillah. How are you today, Doctor? Alhamdulillah. A bit tired, but I'm looking forward for this session. Uh, I'm, I feel very honored to receive the invitation from Brother Rashid 
Thank you so much. I would like to thank for being here also, Dr. Aini. Have you eaten? Alhamdulillah, done already. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay, so Dr. Uh, are you ready to uh, with this talk? Yes. Okay, so without any, wasting any more time, let's start with the first session, introduction. Shall we, Dr? Sure. Okay, so artificial intelligence, as uh, everyone should know, it stands for AI is no longer a thing of science fiction. It exists in the world all around us. As everyone probably know that AI is related to robot. But doctor, uh, is there any reasons why should we have uh, basic knowledge about AI? And why do we need AI in our life? Thank you for the question, Arisha. I would like to, I have prepared a number of slides basically. Uh, and I want to share that now. Okay, sure, Dr. Uh, who's disabled participants? Can Sherry, can you please allow me? <laughs> okay, Alhamdulillah. Right. Uh, can you see my slide? Yes, Dr. Yes. Okay. All right. So to answer the first question, okay. Uh, I would like to straight uh, going into this um, quote. This is a very famous quote in the artificial intelligence world. Okay, so this is coming from Mark Cuban. Okay, he is a billionaire entrepreneur. And then he mentioned this in the Upfront Summit 2017. Okay, so he said, artificial intelligence, deep learning, machine learning, whatever you are doing, if you don't understand it, you have to learn it. Okay, because otherwise you are going to be a dinosaur within three years. Okay, so now we are in 2021. So this is 2017. So it means that everybody must know about this. Okay, so now why is it that uh, I started with this um, quote? Because I just wanted to highlight, okay, uh, straightforward. AI, everybody must know about AI nowadays. Okay, but before we go into the reasons why, Perhaps I can just um, tell you about the uh, uh, textbook definition about AI in the first place. Artificial intelligence leverages computers and machines to mimic, uh, to mimic the problem solving and also decision making capabilities of the human mind. Okay, so historically, um, how do AI uh, became created? Because uh, we want to be able to automate the repetition of tasks conducted by human, okay? So say we, we always repeating that and then we got tired at the end of the day, what happened if we create a machine to do that basically, okay? And then uh, the machine must be able to think like a human when the human do the work previously, okay? So this is the textbook definition of artificial intelligence, okay? And then it leverages on computers. Uh, of course, when we say computers means uh, the CPU, the, uh, the, the memory and so on and so on. So we make use of every uh, good thing about computers. We try to design it and we put it something like a brain uh, mimicking to our human mind capability, the way we are thinking, okay? And then uh, under artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence, uh, this is actually the big umbrella, okay, the outside, uh, the outside uh, circle here. And under the artificial intelligence, uh, then come the machine learning, and then I'm, I'm sh I, I think everybody knows that when we have this machine learning, that people are stop talking about the robots, okay? Uh, because we want to be able, uh, we want to have the machine or the or slash the robot, okay? Uh, to be able to think like the human, okay? So uh, traditionally, machine learning, okay? Uh, this is how it works, okay? Basically, uh, I'm trying to explain this as as simple as possible. Okay, so you have your input here, okay? Uh, of course, to the human eyes, this is a car, okay? Uh, but then we remember that we want to be able, we want the machine to be able to think like us, okay? So we must, uh, we must allow the machine to think like us. How are we going to do that? We, we do the feature extraction. So from the data, so we can see, for example, this object has four tires, this object has four, uh, 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 it's round or maybe uh, model, model uh, color and so on and so on. 
uh, the engine the 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 uh, the, trans, uh, the 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 engine mode or something something like that i do not know really well about car but basically we are giving this input to the machine so that okay they will know uh, how we are perceiving this input basically to our eyes this is a car to the machine this is an um, this is an object okay so we must do the feature extraction and then we allow the machine learning algorithm to do classification, which in the end, okay, given this input, okay, and then the machine learning will tell us, okay, this is a car. So it means this machine learning can uh, think like us already. Okay, say for example, the next input coming uh, only has two tires. So it is not a car anymore. It, it could be a bicycle. And then the machine learning will tell us that this is not a car. Okay, so we have uh, we have successfully uh, converted the machine to be able to think like human here. Okay, and then after that, okay, after a few era, and I think we've started with deep learning, uh, maybe about five to eight years ago. This is the uh, most trendiest uh, AI algorithm in the market right now because why it it added more automation inside the uh, machine learning or artificial intelligence processes, because here it eliminated one more human intervention, which is feature extraction. And then this deep learning can do the feature extraction on its own. So you don't tell the machine learning algorithm that this is the car and these are the attributes of the car. But then the deep learning, when you use that, you it, it is able to learn that on its own. So, so here we uh, have successfully reduced one more human intervention or human tasks involved in the machine learning processes. Okay, so that's why deep learning here is the most trendiest uh, AI algorithm nowadays used in many sectors. Uh, furthermore, nowadays that we have this, um, uh, everything is being generated, being, uh, uh, being uh, connected to the data that we generated uh, every day at every single hour, at every single minute, uh, by every human in the world, the data is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it is making sense that we do not need this feature extraction by human, inter human intervention anymore. We want the deep learning to do that basically. As the data grows bigger, it is able to learn on its own. Okay, right. So this is us basically, okay. Uh, the reason why you need to know artificial intelligence regardless of your background is because we are living in a digital world. This is a data culture for everyone. This is coming from Microsoft, uh, Microsoft uh, website. Okay, Every single thing here, there are many activities here basically. These are involving us. Okay. How do we create the data? For example, if you have a look at this um, satellite, okay, whatever satellite is observing, uh, generating the income. Uh, Facebook here, when you put your status, you are generating the, uh, the data. Okay, so satellite generating the data. Uh, how do you collect the data uh, when you browse in the website? Okay, you put certain trails, the cache, and then people can trace you where you go in the, uh, in the internet world, okay? And then when you go from one device to another device, Bluetooth, it can track. So the data is being generated uh, at the higher speed, okay? And then uh, non-stop 24 hours, okay? So this is why you need to know the AI because all of this, okay? This is data uh, potential for customers, data potential for uh, students, uh, uh, pre uh, student preferences to go to which university. If we, if we study their uh, status, for example, okay, uh, do you want to go to IUM or you want to go to UKM? So if we study this thread of tweets, okay, we will find out that, okay, if they prefer IUM, then how are we going to capture them? Okay, basically it's like that. So here, okay, um, like I mentioned earlier, okay, when you, when you go into your social media world, Everything that you put actually, uh, the data is being collected, data is being passed around, data is being stored somewhere, the data becomes bigger, and you have the big data here, okay, and then the data is being analyzed, okay, so this first part, uh, this one here, okay, 
Um, this is a statistical analysis. This is just the make to make use of statistical um, statistical uh, uh, calculations. Okay, and then you generate the histogram and you find out whether the distribution is normal, the positive is skewed, negative is skewed. So this is just to describe the data, what happened to the data, and then if you involve with the patterns here. So this is actually more useful rather than looking at what happened to the data. So if you are able looking at the data and you find out that there is a certain pattern, uh, whenever students tweet about their preferences to come to the UI, uh, to the university after uh, high school, okay, we see certain pattern that where do where do they want to go, which um, which degree that they they wanted to uh, enroll in and so on. So it means the universities can uh, actually take up this opportunity to create a personalized promotion to them. Okay, so this is this is how we make use of that. So the patterns here, so the patterns here, this is artificial intelligence. Okay, if you're only describing the data, you create a histogram. This is only to describe the data. For example, here, uh, this say for example, this is CGPA. So the first uh, bar here, this is 3.0. And then the second bar, 3.5, uh, and the third bar is for, uh, for pet. Okay, so we can see that, okay, there are many student average in the middle, something like that. But if you make use of AI, you can investigate further. Okay, what caused certain students to get um, less than three, for example, and so on and so on. So this, this is why you need to learn AI, regardless of any uh, domain, any background you come from, if you're coming from uh, science, uh, if you have a look at your gene data, for example, uh, you want to find out certain patterns from the data, you want to identify certain anomalies, okay, uh, then you make use of the AI, all right? So with that, I link with this, okay? So the most valuable commodity in the world is smart money, okay? It's not gold, okay? It's data. When you have the data, you know your customers, you know your clients, uh, you know your business well. Uh, when you know that, you are able to create a personalized marketing campaign, you are able to uh, create uh, a strategic uh, business action plan to increase the sales, etc. Okay, so the most valuable commodity in the world is data. And then, of course, it is fueled by the technological advancement. Uh, 10 years ago, or maybe in 2000s, the laptop is very bulky, uh, but then it is very slow, the memory is very small, but nowadays, uh, getting compact, getting faster, getting cheaper, okay? So it's actually created a loop. When the technological advancement going up, okay, so your data also being generated at a higher speed, and then the analysis coming of that, okay, to find out the patterns for data also increase. So you learn more and more and more about your customer, okay? Uh, and then um, here, actually, I wanted to highlight, okay, say, for example, in the 1960s, uh, in the 1970s, uh, when people is using their computers to, to store transaction data or sales data, so they have this column. Uh, the customer ID, and then uh, what are the items of product that they bought from the company. Okay, so in statistic world, we can have two types of data to be analyzed. Uh, the first one we call it as population. Okay, population means you take all customers inside that particular data, and then you analyze the data. Samples, on the other hand, you select a certain uh, uh, customers, for example, based that Okay, I do not want to. I do not want to select all customers in Malaysia, but I just want to analyze those customers in Selangor. Okay, so I will I will create sample for Selangor only. So I want to find out in quarter of 2020, quarter three 2020, how many uh, sales that we have made in Selangor, something like that. So this is like in 60s, 70s, um, 80s, uh, and then uh, after that, you know, when the internet uh, came to Malaysia, I think in 1996, okay, uh, when we have the internet and so on, okay, uh, we have a sub individual email address, uh, and then every, in the, uh, and then we can have uh, one individual with five email address, 
Okay, and after that, uh, uh, internet account or something like that, and then the social media, the apps here and so on. So nowadays, uh, by looking at you alone, we, we can also consider you as a population because you are moving from here, social media, going to the web, then you upload something, then you store something, you put uh, in uh, you put in cloud, okay, and then you you capture picture and then you put it in tweet and so on, so on. So you alone also can tell, uh, can become the only single uh, individual that a customer can uh, analyze to learn about your behavior. Okay, when you tweet uh, in the morning, uh, and then when you go, when you you uh, put the location, uh, you are here and so on, so on. So they will learn about you. And then sometimes I, I do get uh, this question a lot from my students because they say that sometimes, uh, why is it that I think they are listening to us? So the day is actually all of this thing, okay? Because when you uh, try to find something in Shopee, say for example, you want to find out Nilofa hijab, okay? Suddenly, Nilofa hijab appeared in your Facebook. Ah, because it moved, you know? Uh, whatever you do, it moves from one place to another place to another place to another place. So you alone also uh, can increase the sales of a certain company. So data culture, everyone. Uh, is it a good thing? Uh, is it a bad thing? Uh, so you decide on that basically. But do not put, you know, your 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 house number with the location, and then that one you are finding, uh, you are you know inviting something back to your house. Okay, so the artificial intelligence, okay, uh, the goal uh, is uh, the first one, automation, okay, uh, because we uh, we have this repetition of tasks and we want the machine learning or the artificial intelligence to automate that, uh, to do the automation and then to identify patterns and also anomalies. So these are, these are two of the uh, main goals of artificial intelligence. Okay, so identify patterns mean to find out more about uh, customers. Anomalies, for example, um, you have credit card, okay, or your debit card, and suddenly your debit card is swiped in Terengganu, but you are in Kuala Lumpur, okay? And then based on the pattern, uh, based on the pattern or the data that has been uh, received by the debit card uh, company, and then the data that they have before that, they have collected the data about you for two years, for example, and they will see that, okay, there, there is an anomaly. Uh, what kind of transaction uh, is being conducted in the Tangano? Um, and then it will alert the bank uh, to call you, for example, uh, is it true that you have uh, swiped uh, one ringgit, uh, 1,000 ringgit to buy this and so on and so on. Uh, so th this is the use of um, artificial intelligence. Okay, and then uh, of course, um, when we have this, basically just to enhance human uh, efficiency, have a look at this one, okay. Um, this is, for example, like this is a waste, right? Uh, how are you going to predict uh, basically from point A to point B? You don't have the data at hand, okay. I uh, say, for example, that uh, today you wanted to travel from Gombak to Putrajaya, okay, and then the time is 1 p.m., so it's a peak hour. Uh, and then uh, you do not know what is, uh, you, can, you can safely assume there will be traffic jam. But then there will be other things, for example, like accidents and so on. So you don't have that particular data, okay? So these uh, ways, okay, they collect the data based on the communications or the reports coming from other ways user. They pull that data and then they will, they also look at the previous data and then they will be able to predict, okay, to come out, okay, so from Gomba to Putrajaya, perhaps 50 minutes. Uh, but then if you travel at 3 p.m., perhaps uh, 30 minutes or something like that. Okay, so can you imagine that this one, by using our own human um, reasoning or human brain, we are able to do that? Basically, not. Okay, uh, so one, okay, so this is one way to enhance human efficiency. And then the grab. Okay, so the grab, again, the peak hour, the, the non-peak hour, uh, raining, not raining, uh, accident, uh, traffic jam, and so on. So how do you calculate basically uh, when will uh, your Grab driver reach you with your food, okay? Uh, facial recognition, uh, say for example, like uh, we have 
this uh, facial recognition uh, to unlock your phone. Okay. Um, if we are going to be based on the human expert, say that this human expert can study faces very well, but there will be times that the accuracy of the recognition will be failing over time due to aging, due to sickness and so on. So we cannot rely on that. Okay, so uh, we need to have a machine that comes uh, that can have our own uh, experiences on uh, recognizing uh, human face uh, to allow this particular uh, particular user to unlock his un unlock unlock his phone something like that and of course for Netflix um, this is one one of the example okay you can have more than that okay uh, recommendation uh, so this is one of the biggest um, application of artificial intelligence, which is to do recommendation, okay? Uh, because if we, if you just, you know, um, say for example, like in the 90s, you go to this um, video store and then you ask the, uh, the person, okay, uh, do you have any other um, crime movie uh, similar to this, similar to, uh, similar to what I have rented before? And then uh, based on his experience, he will be suggesting another movie. Okay, but then the recommendation will, uh, it's, it is not actually accurate uh, because of the limitation of the, that particular customer, uh, customer representative uh, experience. Okay, so by using artificial intelligence, which is fueled by the technological advancement, which works on the data, okay, uh, Analyzing the previous data, analyzing the current data, okay, is able to make uh, an accurate recommendation, okay, which one you want to uh, watch in Netflix, similar genre to the one that you have uh, liked or uh, favored before, something like that. I hope this answered the first question. Yes, yes, doctor, very much because, uh. The reason why we need to know about AI is because uh, it's a digital world, just like you said before, and it's the technology is now revolving around us, right? Like, uh, like the example you shared just now, the Waze, Grab, mm. and Netflix, and it quite scares me actually that uh, when I say, oh, I want to have this, I want to buy a nail polish, and all of a sudden on my Instagram, it came out like the nail polish, I was like, oh. I have to buy it. I have to buy it like that. So that's AI, right, doctor? Yes, that's AI. Yeah. And if I watch movies on Netflix, it keeps coming the recommendation, and then I cannot stop watching Netflix. Yes, <laughs> it, it right. will trigger you to you know binge watch. Uh, say for yes. example, sometimes they know you. They know you better than you know yourself. Uh, perhaps yes, that's so yourself. True. Uh, for example, like uh, Facebook, when you're browsing Facebook, right, you say, okay, I'm just going to browse 10 minutes before I sleep, okay? <laughs> but then based on your previous activities in different platforms, in different social media, once you open the Facebook, uh, suddenly the video showed is something that you wanted to find out uh, before this. So rather than 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 <laughs> minutes, 40 minutes, and then you know what happened? Uh, three hours Facebook, and then you just uh, start sleeping at 3 p.m., Mm, uh, yes. yeah <laughs> that's so true like also it applies also uh, to instagram reels and tiktok just like uh, our brother here say half designer he said tiktok i believe that you watch tiktok for several hours right <laughs> because yeah, TikTok. I, yeah. <laughs> all right it, 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 it enhances your uh, addictions basically Oh, uh, yeah. So that's why, that's so you know, uh, uh, because this is not just only on artificial intelligence, uh, the technology that we have now, okay, it actually increases your appetites to know more and more and more and then create addictions. Mm -hmm. It is up to you how you're going to minimize that basically. Yes, it's up to us to know, uh, to make it as our advantage or disadvantage. It's going to benefit our, us or it's going to destroy us like that. Okay, doctor. All right, so before we go to the second session with more questions for you, doctor, I would like to remind all participants to fill up the attendance form provided in the chat box. All right, so doctor, now let's go to the second session. It's general thought. Okay, Um, most already know that machines are better than humans at physical tasks. They can move faster, more precisely, and lift greater lots, or sometimes they can like work more 
hours and hours and hours. So when these machines are also as intelligent as us, there will be almost nothing they cannot do or maybe cannot learn to do quickly. Therefore, people claim that perhaps 99% of jobs will eventually be eliminated, the human workforces. So how could we combat people's increasing fear of future jobs being automated or optimized with AI and that the number of human workforces might dwindle, doctor? Thank you for that question. Okay, so I'll just have to... So we go back to the ultimate goal of having AI, which is to do automation. The repetition of tasks, we want to replace that with something that will not be tiring when they are doing the repetitious, repetitious tasks over and over again compared to human, human energy. Okay, so have a look at this um, scary picture here. Okay, uh, automation. Okay, you have the robots, uh, the arms. Uh, to, to, to assemble the car, okay? You have only one to monitor the whole thing. Uh, basically, I think he will just monitor whether uh, all robot arms are working in order, okay? But then in 1920, you have many humans working on different parts of the car, okay? So perhaps, you know, one person at one tire, another person at another tire, and so on and so on. So it says uh, it, it is something that is scary, okay? Uh, because uh, we say that uh, automation will, uh, will create more robots and robots will create humans, okay? Uh, but then for the business point of view, okay, uh, automation boosts efficiency and increases productivity uh, because, okay, workers' production per hour increases because you don't, uh, you don't have a robot arm that becomes tiring. You don't have a robot arm that need lunch hour, okay? And so on, okay? So the... Workers' production per hour, static. Uh, per, uh, static, and then say, for example, per hour, they can assemble about uh, 200 uh, cars, and then it remains static, okay? Uh, and then when they improve further with the, the arms, uh, the automation process, they reduce certain, certain uh, assembling or something like that, then they will be able to add more cars uh, uh, fully assembled per hour compared to the previous one. And again, uh, when we see this kind of... Um, uh, scenario happening, we can see that the humans are getting less and less and less and less. Okay, so this is a, uh, this is a scary thing. And then this is always a debate in the AI world. Okay, but then um, a bit to differ, because you know, okay, through this automation nightmare, basically, we can have more uh, new job opportunities, basically. Okay, so say, for example, here, uh, we have here, Microsoft Excel debuted in 1985, uh, and then at that time, uh, people will be thinking something like, we don't need the accountant now because everybody can manage their own financial activities and data. So uh, don't bother to study account, don't bother to become accountant, okay? But then the answer is no, basically, because when you create this automation, it created uh, a ripple effect. And then Alhamdulillah, the ripple effect is most of the time uh, a positive one, okay? Because uh, more accountants are needed to handle the rising complicated financial services that could be due to the growing number of personal accounts created and the field itself aligns with the more business opportunities. When people know how to, how to handle their own data, there will be new services inside the uh, accountancy world. Okay? And then there will be new business opportunities created, uh, more complicated and so on, which the uh, authorized accountant only the humans, okay, that can do that better uh, compared that when you just uh, manage everything in Microsoft Excel. So it created a positive ripple effect, basically, when you created the automation in the first place, okay? And then I give you the second example, automatic teller machine ATM. We thought if we have ATMs, means the banks now do not need to hire bank tellers, right? Since we have automated that process, okay? In reality, when there are many ATMs around, the banks are prompted to open more branches when they look at the ATMs data and they found that they have a good custom, a good number of customers in that area. Okay, say for example that this bank is only in Kuala Lumpur, but they put because the ATM is automated and is cheaper because you don't have to uh, you don't have to hire the person by hour. 
you just uh, buy the ATM, you put it into many places in Malaysia. Say, for example, you put it in Pahang, okay? And then you find out that, okay, through the ATM data, oh, I have many clients or customers here. And then it prompted the bank to create new branch. And then, okay, when you have new banks, mean that you have more bank tellers. Okay, so uh, more bank tellers, and then these bank tellers will handle the more complicated and personalized banking processes, which subsequently will create a happy pool of customers. Again, this is a good or positive ripple effect for coming from the automation nightmare. Okay, so you don't have to worry about that basically. Okay, uh, say this one, I put it into the um, computer world, okay. Have a look at this Amazon uh, 20 years plus ago. This is the uh, initial website. Uh, and you can see that, you know, under the browse here, you, uh, at that time, they are selling books, uh, music, DVD videos, uh, electronics, software, toys. Uh, and then they have uh, this, um, you know, on the right side, the new releases and so on. Okay. But now you can see that they are, you know, uh, they are uh, selling more things, okay? Uh, and then those things you can uh, specifically see here, okay? Something that is uh, personalized, okay? Gaming accessories, holiday gifts, and so on. Uh, and then now it is open to the worldwide, okay? So from 20 years plus ago to now, uh, number of types of goods can be sold increase, able to reach the customers all over the world. Of course, increase the sales, enhance the revenues, and then allow for new job creation. Highly skilled worker that is aligned with the advances of automation technology. So what Amazon did, they have this, for example, they have this uh, very uh, normal clock, but then uh, they, 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 they uh, upgraded their employees to learn uh, more about computers, maybe about tools. Okay, so they upgraded their employees. Uh, and then this is aligned with the advances of automation technology. So to conclude uh, this, basically when one door closes, actually another one opens. So do not be worried about uh, the situation that the humans will be replaced by um, AI. Because I think people are scared of robots, but AI is not only about robots. AI is many things, okay? so. Uh, in the automation or the manufacturing world like this, okay, perhaps, you know, uh, what they can do, they can update their uh, employees to have a specific uh, engineering skill or something like that, you know, that comes along with the automation means learn about how the arms work, okay, rather than you put in the tires, uh, you repair the tires, now you repair the arms. So you upgrade that. So it will not be replacing the humans 100%, okay? It, it basically created a positive ripple effect, which in the end actually created more uh, new jobs, basically. Okay, thank you, Doctor, for the answer. So in conclusion, um, like we are going to improve more and more. Like AI is one of the example that we are improving to a better, like the, the technology is improving and revolving and everything. So it's open uh, a new jobs for, for us also. It's not going to uh, limit or something like that, right, doctor? Yes. Okay. It, um, it, 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 it is in a way uh, and forces the humans not to become static. Okay, so yes. the humans need to learn over time and learn and relearn, upgrading, upscaling over time. So the humans will not be static. It basically so enforces us to do that, yeah. Yeah, that's so true. So um, you know, so it's basically uh, telling us that we don't have to worry about uh, having AI improving a lot more, upgrading more, because it's open a lot more jobs for us. So, okay, uh, moving on with this interesting topic about AI into the third session, session, a uh, specific field which is in education. Okay, since uh, 2019, uh, IUM has embarked on a whole institution transformation, uh, WIT, in order to consolidate its vision of becoming a leading international center of educational excellence. Uh, the IUM roadmap 
of year 2019 to 2022, uh, 2020, sorry, reflects uh, this with its strategic direction of humanizing education via Makasi Asharia and Sustainable Development Goals, or better known also as SDGs. Therefore, education at IIUM must be laden with uh, values in line with the Makasi Asharia and operationalized through SDGs. Okay, so my question here is, Doctor, does AI have influence in our education system? Okay, so thank you for the question. The answer is yes. Okay, um, this is this is uh, this slide is one of many uh, contributions of AI in education. Basically, uh, I chose this example because uh, this is us basically as a university. Uh, you have the lecturers and you have the students. Okay, and then nowadays uh, we are learning more and more about uh, special or uh, types of uh, learning uh, from one student to another student. Uh, some students prefer uh, uh, imagination, so you need to put in more visualizations. Some students like the sentences, so if you put one big paragraph, they also can learn about that. Uh, and then there are students that likes about numerical and so on and so on. Okay, so as the psychology field is and uh, is growing to understand about the learning habits or learning behaviors of humans. Okay, the AI, uh, the AI part can take leverage on that information to actually create something like personalized approach to learning programs based on students' unique experiences and preferences. And this includes if the student have a dyslexia, something that they cannot really identify certain alphabets in the sentences uh, with learning uh, disability, okay? Uh, and then, you know, uh, with uh, uh, if, uh, if he or she cannot really um, listen well or something like that. So personalizing approaching, uh, approach uh, is getting uh, widely accepted in the education uh, area. And then uh, how to tailor that basically to the specific student is by using the artificial intelligence, basically uh, identifying the level of knowledge of that particular student has, uh, what is he, uh, what is his, uh, his speed of learning, and then what are his desired goals in the end? Okay, do you want to, uh, do you want to capture about 70% of the course? Do you want to capture about 90% of the course? Okay, but then the ultimate goal, the students are getting the most out of their education. Because this is not like uh, how I was being educated before. Uh, it's very uh, standardized, um, very standardized, and then very uh, general. Okay, uh, everybody has to follow certain suit, uh, certain type of education. Uh, the, uh, the teacher will talk uh, in front. Uh, and then write down on the whiteboard and then you copy and so on and so on, okay? But then um, uh, based on what we know now, there are certain, uh, there are certain types of uh, learners, okay? So um, yeah, AI leverages on that information and then they, it is able to do personalized uh, approach basically uh, to enhance the student capability of learning with the ultimate goal, students are getting the most out of their education. Uh, and then uh, this one, I just listed, listed uh, a few AI-based solutions uh, available uh, in the market, basically. Okay, so we have a Jill Watson. Uh, this is a visual teaching assistant. Uh, the teaching assistant offer individual attention to scholars to keep them from quitting schools. I think this one is being created so that uh, the students are not feeling overwhelmed that they cannot understand uh, maybe 50% of the syllabus and this, uh, they feel demotivated or something like that. Okay, so it is actually a bot that responds to different predictable queries such as how to format a paper. And then how it get, get started in the first place, of course, from the data that they have collected over time. Okay, uh, from the data that they have collected over time, they do the uh, learning on that, on that particular data, and then they, they are able to uh, create uh, different predictable queries from that uh, from that uh, whatever question coming from the student. So this is a visual teaching assistant. And then we have one from the content technologies. Uh, this AI innovation firm has built a collection of smart content solutions for high school and higher educational levels. 
It leverages AI to offer and explain textbook information into a more comprehensible guide. Because we know that there are some students cannot just read things, okay? Sometimes it need to be backed up with graph, with uh, numerical or statistics or something like that, okay? So uh, this, uh, this AI firm, okay, actually created that. Uh, the breakdown consists of summaries through and unto exercises and multi-option quizzes. And in the end, okay, this is summing up the personalized uh, learning approach uh, offered by this particular uh, company to that particular student. Okay, so in the end, it will, it will be able to enhance the student's uh, learning progress. And then we have this one, Duolingo. This is uh, actually quite famous, okay? Uh, it's a language learning tool that leverages AI to deliver a placement exam. Uh, the test is adaptive. What does it mean by adaptive? It will alter the question based on the responses you provided before. So this is what I'm telling you before this. This is not generic uh, like what we have learned in the 90s, okay? Everybody has the same test. This is generic, okay? But then this one, based on the responses, then it will be able to alter the next one because it learns your learning preferences. Okay, uh, at such, you will offer a more straightforward theory if you fail and a more challenging one if you give the right answer. So it will enhance uh, the, the, it will enhance the learning process uh, on its own without, uh, without having a teacher to actually observe and come up with the same, uh, the same responses. Okay, uh, additionally, it also leverages AI in optimizing and personalizing sessions. It has features that assesses mistake patterns that many language students make when they practice uh, new learned words. With this information, this tool can determine where you forget a specific term. Uh, also factors in the complexity of phrases, for example, like, you know, certain accent, okay? All these details help in determining the best time to practice languages rather than, you know, very generic. Everybody got 90 minutes to tell you this. No, it depends on your learning, um, preference, unique uh, experience, uh, and your own desired goals. And if you have any learning disabilities. Okay. Interesting, Doctor, because I also use Duolingo to learn Korean. And ah. it helps me a lot, actually. <laughs> So I just knew that Duolingo is actually AI. Yes, it is AI. Most of, uh, most of the app nowadays, uh, I would say, uh, this, is, this is based on my personal opinion. I would say that uh, the apps that we have nowadays, 90% uh, are based on AI. Uh, it could be just uh, a little bit AI or to be more AI or something like that. But I think it is driven by AI. Uh, there must be some AI uh, elements inside that basically. Because uh, again, when we relate back to the datafication, the data culture that we live in, okay, we do not want just to be able to describe the data. We want to be able to predict the data, okay, predict what happens next, uh, finding out the patterns, unique patterns, and all of these are acquired by artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then okay, um, you know your your uh, IUM uh, education, the roadmap, everything. Uh, this is something that I am not <laughs> the expert, okay? Because this, this one, I think, belongs to the education uh, experts or field. But then I can relate uh, the very definition of the education in the IUM with the responsible AI uh, factor, okay? So if we have a look at the responsible AI, okay? is the practice of designing, developing, and deploying AI with good intention to empower employees and businesses and fairly impact customers and society, allowing companies to engender trust and scale AI with confidence. Okay, so we because we know that artificial intelligence, uh, they are able to make predictions, but they are not necessarily 100% all the time. That's not, uh, even not 90% uh, of the time, but then we want, them to know we have this responsible factor okay in ai that whatever we uh, create ai app we have good intention okay and i think this good intention is uh, uh, in harmony with the ium roadmap 2019-2020 where you have the human humanizing education via makasik sharia something that is true something that is controlled okay within the sharia 
and then you have the sustainable development goals where you have about 17 goals okay and then as you mentioned before the educational values should be in line with the market and sharia and operationalized through sdgs so since i am not the expert in education but i what i can share with you is my own experiences of having mapping this responsible AI with this education in IUM. So these are some of my FYP students project, okay? Uh, for the first one here, I have development of classification methods for WIS and fractal using mild frequency spectral coefficient. Okay, this is a deep learning approach. Basically, this one lies in the health uh, domain, okay? And then we know that in health domain, uh, we know that when new doctors are coming into to the hospital, they will do this residency, okay? They will do this residency and then based on residency, the experience that they got from that, they will make use of, to, uh, they will make use of that in later or future consultations, okay? So based on uh, whatever that they have uh, diagnosed during the residency, uh, they predict, okay, uh, for the future, uh, diagnosis, for example, okay, but then, okay, when we use the AI, okay, we are putting in the data, okay, that could be years and years and years of experience coming from various doctors, rather than one doctor doing residency and learning that on their own. Uh, so, and then we make use of the AI algorithm to do prediction, okay, so it means that when there is a new case about uh, this risk and practical, okay, uh, use the algorithm and we are able to uh, create or come up with a diagnosis similar to the real doctor. Uh, so this is one way to uh, apply AI uh, with the good intention so that um, the, custom, the, the patient do not have to take uh, the, the uh, x-ray uh, many times and then need to be consulted by various doctors. Uh, the data is scattered throughout the hospital uh, and then, you know, uh, from one appointment to another appointment, uh, taking about six months and so on and so on. Okay, so we can make use of that basically. And then this one, okay, uh, uh, relate with the good intention, the responsible AI, and then we relate it to SDG number three, which is to contribute in the good health and well-being of human, basically. So this is uh, the work of my uh, student, Tini Muhammad Sadi. So we have uh, actually published this one uh, who worked in this uh, IGPCC journal. So another one, okay, uh, this is about um, waste management. Okay, so waste, uh, an approach of classifying waste using transfer learning method. So transfer learning method is AI, AI algorithm, okay. So waste management is one of the major challenges facing by the world, okay, regardless of whether the region is being established or under growth. Everywhere in the, in the world, okay, whether you are uh, first country or your third grade country, but the, uh, but the, waste, uh, the waste is being generated every day, okay? So how, how do these countries um, plan uh, how to reduce the waste, how to manage the waste, so that the waste will not be uh, buried uh, under the earth, okay? Uh, or you put, you dump everything in the ocean, okay? So that's why um, we are making, uh, we make use of the uh, deep learning again here from virtual neural network uh, to do the waste classification. And after that, uh, will be picked up by certain um, waste company uh, so that they will transform uh, to, to something else, something that is useful uh, from maybe, uh, I don't know, plastic bag to become, um, I don't know, bottle or something like that. And then uh, this one is related to SDGs, life below water, means that we are trying not to put the garbage, okay? You're not try, trying to uh, dump everything in the sea and also life on land. So uh, we want to reduce the, the, the land uh, that you uh, purposely put the waste, but then the waste is getting bigger, 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 bigger every day. Uh, I think, I think, I think last year, I think last or last year or last two years, there was one place in Malaysia that um, the garbage is very high, and I think the minister also took uh, notice on that. So what to do with that basically? So this is one way to 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 apply. Uh, artificial intelligence with the good intention to reduce the waste, okay, and then uh, we hope that after that, 
it will be picked up by the relevant parties to, to continue the effort. Okay. And then uh, we have here prediction of the level of air pollution during wildfires using classification methods. Though we don't have wildfires in Malaysia, uh, I think, I'm not sure whether we had one, but you can see this pattern in USA a lot, Australia a lot, uh, suddenly wildfires, okay? So we can uh, make use of the AI uh, to, to do the prediction by looking at the level of air pollution, and then we can, you know, uh, we can uh, tell the necessary uh, authorities uh, to do warning or something like that, okay? Uh, so this one is, uh, again, the good health and well-being. And the last one is prediction of agricultural emissions in Malaysia using ARIMA, LSTM and regression models. So this is for SDG number 13, climate action, okay? So agriculture has always been an important economical factor for any country, which is causing emissions every day without realizing how much it is leading towards increasing number of greenhouse gas. So this is not good. The more you have greenhouse gas, uh, the, the, the more you will contribute to the climate uh, change, basically. So again, we make use of the AI uh, with a good intention to be able to do prediction, tell the necessary authorities, and then we hope that it will be picked up by the necessary authorities to do, uh, to prepare or to, to come up with strategic plans so that it will be reduced, basically. So this is SDG number 13, climate action. Uh, I hope that it is okay um, because this is this is how I um, translating your question basically because I am not the expert in education uh, field and that I am able to talk about matasi sharia or uh, talk about the stuff okay but then I just uh, relate the very bad de definitions of the two okay responsible AI and also education in IUM. Um, I see that it's okay. Um, it was a nice sharing and the projects are really, really great, I can see. Um, so doctor, um, do you think that we are already moving toward the technology and how do you think the AI can aid the sustainable developments on our campus? Okay, thank you for that question. Okay, sure. so I think this one, um, I will sum up with one uh, IUM flagship project uh, championed by KICT by uh, Associate Professor Dr. Naomi Sham, which I, uh, I am part of her team members, okay? So basically um, what we want to do, okay? Uh, when you have a look at this, okay, let me just enlarge the poster, okay? Uh, because this is something that uh, we relate that to COVID-19 pandemic outbreak, okay? So, uh, you know, normally what we, what we will do, we, we are depending on the fiat money system. You have the ringgit measure and you have the categories of levels, right? Uh, these, these are uh, talked by many people. Uh, you belong to B40, you belong to M40, the T20 does not help M40 and so on and so on. So it's like a certain class existed within the society, okay? Because, and then it is driven by uh, who's having more money, basically, okay? So, but then what we want to do, okay? Uh, because for during the COVID-19, the, the biggest uh, group that is uh, the, the most uh, group impacted from COVID-19 is of course the B40, okay? So, uh, and then from, say for example, uh, that particular family is from M40, but from, due to COVID-19 now becomes B40, okay, and et cetera. So this is something that we do not want to happen in, in our society uh, because it creates a sadness, it creates hunger problem, it creates homeless problem. Uh, families are getting uh, broken off, okay, because we are relying with this uh, fiat money, okay who's having the more money uh, and then will be having more help, uh, more influence and so on. So the sustainable social bank, basically, okay, uh, from the fiat money, the RM that we have at hand, we convert that to become the time spent on community based to complete certain tasks. Okay, so you contribute to the community within the sustainable social bank and then, uh, um, Based from that, okay, uh, a task requested by another, uh, another community 
uh, can request so that uh, anybody can help anybody here, regardless of you are B40, you are M40, or you are T20. Okay, so uh, the more time you spend, actually related to more money, but then not in the real currency, basically. So when you more time you spend with your community, for example, okay, let's do gardening together. Okay, we have this uh, extra land behind the ICT. Uh, they plan all those uh, uh, herbs and so on. So the more time you spend, you will get that currency in the sustainable social bank, and then you can able to uh, redeem that uh, to get us uh, to get uh, to ask other people within the group uh, to do uh, other things for you. See, for example, that my laptop is broken. Can I ask uh, Brother Zaim Kat City? Uh, can you can you fix my laptop? I have this uh, I have this currency in my sustainable social bank. Uh, so, so you see, we are not driven by money anymore in this sustainable social bank. Okay, so this is about the sustainability. And talk about the technology, right? Okay, so this one is powered by blockchain and here AI can be the part of uh, blockchain. Just to um, highlight to you what is a blockchain. Blockchain is a shared immutable ledger that facilitates the process of recording transactions and tracking assets in a business network. An asset can be tangible, a house, car, cash, land, or intangible, intellectual property, patents, copyrights, branding. Uh, visually, anything of value can be tracked and traded on a blockchain network, reducing risk and cutting costs for all involved. So here, we, uh, we ensure that party A connected to party B without a middle person that will take uh, commissions. Okay, so it will be direct, okay? Uh, business runs on information, the faster it's received, the more accurate it is, the better. Blockchain is ideal for delivering that information because it provides immediate, shared, and completely transparent information stored on immutable ledger that can be accessed by only permission network members. So you don't have the, you know, uh, I think this one is, uh, is, is, um, is uh, well known, happen in Malaysia when you buy, uh, when you buy something uh, from uh, dealer off uh, from Lazada or off from Shopee, uh, you are buying iPhone, for example. But then the, the 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 ones that are the one that they are sending to you is actually a brick, okay? So it's not an iPhone; it's something else. Sometimes uh, just empty box, and you have no way to track those uh, dealer or those sellers. But in blockchain world, everything is temperance. Everybody knows everybody, okay? And then uh, a blockchain network can track orders, payments, account production, and much more. And then uh, by looking at all this, okay, you can see how AI actually can be incorporated. Whether you know uh, to track the orders, to 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 make sure that you know from uh, from this person, the one that requested the service and the one who provided the service, which is the ideal uh, mesh, uh, not matchmaking, but you know which one. Uh, which network member can accurately perform the task that you have requested. So we can make use of the AI in that particular um, aspect, basically, inside this uh, sustainable social bank. So to answer your question, uh, it is already happening in UIA, okay? Um, there are many more IUM flagships, and I'm sure that AI exists, uh, maybe perhaps 60 or 80% in all of that. I see, Doctor. Thank you so much for answering the questions, Doctor. So um, we are moving on. A bit earlier, I told all participants to ask questions if they have. So okay. let us move on to the next session, uh, Q and A session. Um, let's see if we have question here in Zoom. Uh, okay. So we have questions from YouTube, Doctor. Okay. Okay, so the first question is from Ahmad Nuruddin. Uh, his question is, what is the most scariest thing that you can expect from new AI technology? Can you repeat? Can you repeat that? Uh, sure, sure. What is the most scariest thing that you can expect from new AI technology, Doctor? New AI technology. Okay, yes. Um. Uh, okay, I think this is something that um, it's not, it's not true, but then it's something that people talk about. Um, they can make use of the AI uh, to actually uh, replicate some viruses, I think. Uh, so 
Uh, so because you know in artificial intelligence we have this subdomain called genetic algorithms. So we we learn about the DNA tracing and so on. Uh, not only humans, the the the, the animals, the, the the plants and so on. Uh, if you don't have the good intention, uh, say for example COVID nineteen virus itself, people can replicate that uh, through the use of artificial intelligence, and then um, you know uh, spread it out, and then that's why you you don't you, uh, it's a never uh, ending uh, situation for COVID-19 basically, and then uh, it is always evolving or something like that. So I think uh, the most scariest one, if you apply the artificial intelligence knowledge into the domain that is impacting uh, our very own body, that one is the scariest one. Uh, replicating viruses and then um, uh, uh, learn about the virus, uh, how it can evolve on its own uh, very fast uh, and so on and so on. Uh, but then not not to give uh, the good, uh, not to give a bad, good thing to human, but to destroy human. Basically, I think that that's the most scariest one because it involves us, uh, human body. I see. Okay. When you say that, okay, that's the most scariest thing because of what happened uh, yes. for almost two years already. It's the scariest thing. Okay. Thank you, Dr. For answering the question. Uh, okay, we are going to wait for the from the audience uh, if they have any questions. If you have any questions to ask the doctor, you may mention your name from what Julia and also and then state your question. Do you have any question from the audience? Okay, so, but before that, uh, I want to remind everyone after this q &A session, we are going to have a photography session. So you guys may get ready. <laughs> Open the camera, take the dong and everything. Yes. <laughs> no, always my lecture, I conducted my live lecture in MS Teams, right? I am the only one who is turning on my camera. Uh, and my motivation to do that basically because I cannot see my students, okay? I cannot see their face, but I want them to know me when they see me outside. Do you, can you recognize me outside when you have a look at my face the whole semester? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. I hope I can meet you, doctor. <laughs> inshallah, we can. Uh, I, I'm not really, uh, yeah. Let's try next year, inshallah. Inshallah. All right, so doctor, we have one question. Uh, from oh my god sorry sorry oh where is going okay from Muhammad Fazril uh what do you expect from AI technology in terms of alternate universe I see Muhammad Fazil do you mean metaverse <laughs> metaverse the one that uh, uh Muhammad Fazil is here uh, yes madam I'm here so do you mean the metaverse? Ah uh, yes, I mean that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so metaverse suddenly become uh, become popular due to Mark Zuckerberg, right? Actually, you know, metaverse coming from visual reality. You know, I have one uh, university friend uh, in UK studied that basically visual reality. So what can I expect from AI technology in terms of alternate universe? Okay, uh, again, it comes back to the individual. Okay, um, you can enjoy your alternate universe. For example, uh, you can go into the game uh, farming, for example, and then you communicate, you, you are ming mingle around with other players inside uh, with all those realistic visual uh, reality elements inside, but do not be uh, do not be too overwhelmed inside that particular alternate universe because um, uh, it will become addictive basically uh, in japan okay uh, japan is the first rate country right so they have been exposed to these games a uh, long time ago and they have this uh, group of youth in japan they have this special uh, japanese term uh, those that who never went outside never goes outside okay uh, because they cannot communicate in real life because they are always in this alternate universe 
uh, we do not want to have our youth. Uh, you are our uh, you are our potential prime minister, my prime minister in future. You are my potential uh, leaders. Okay, so I do not want my potential leaders to be able uh, to be in this alternate universe. And then you know, in alternate alternate universe you can control on your own okay but then when you go outside reality struck uh, you wanted to have din list but you don't have din list then you break down mental breakdown and so on so do not do not be like that basically uh, so this uh, what do you expect from your technology in terms of the alternate universe make sure you not you do not become addictive with the alternate universe is that answering your question uh, yes madam that's all Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Doctor, for answering the question. Ah, Mama Fazri, Hikikomori, yes. Oh, <laughs> so that's the term for the youth uh, in Japan. They never go outside. Oh, interesting. Mm. Why they decided to do that? Because they, they felt uh, they can control alternate world and they are socially awkward in real life. Uh, so they become deeper and deeper, deeper connected to the alternate world, uh, the alternate universe. So it's like they are um, being in their own world like that? Mm, yeah. Okay. It's very interesting. Yeah. Me too. I think, I think so too, uh, Sister Zeti Rania. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a little time, so we can answer one more question. Uh, it's from Mu Yusuf uh, Jamaluddin. So the question is, from a legal point, the data is collected, is uh, private, and we have the right to request for the data. For IIUM, will they comply with it? The answer is, we have the procedure of getting the data uh, approval from the owner, basically. Uh, so if you go through the right channel, okay, asking the correct person, uh, fill in the correct form, uh, getting back the approval, then you don't have to worry about the data that you want to use, basically. Uh, but then if you Google, okay, if you Google, there are many data sets, okay, data sets that you can play around, uh, especially the COVID-19 I think uh, Minister Kairi Jamaluddin also said that now it becomes uh, public, so you can download it, you can play around, uh, do your own analysis. Uh, there are AI, um, there are AI website that can give you the classical data sets for you to play, to analyze, okay, to learn your algorithms better and so on. But uh, but then just uh, wanted to point up uh, to point out again. There is a procedure and you just need to follow that procedure. Then the IUM will comply with it, basically. Okay, I see. Oh, the personal student's data. <laughs> okay. Uh, personal student's data, what do you mean? Uh, do you, uh, okay. Um, for example, okay, if you receive a Google, uh, sorry, Google form blast, right, from, from WhatsApp saying that uh, we are the students from probability and statistic, you want to collect data about your CGP and so on, so on. So if you basically fill in the Google form means that you already approve, <laughs> approve your data to be taken by those uh, researchers, basically. Uh, but then, okay, uh, in reality, when we talk about research ethics, the Google form should have this cover page, something like, um, you know, uh, this data will be collected for the use, blah, 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 will not be uh, published to third party, blah, 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 something like that. Uh, sometimes there is a cover page that's specifically stated about your, your private or confidential, uh, your, your own, um, you know, you need to know that. And if you agree with that sentences, then you can just uh, fill in the form. Is that answering your question? Yusuf? So basically, those who created the Google form, they have to have this cover page that specifically stated what are the users of from the data? For, uh, what do you expect from the data? Uh, do you agree to, to, to participate in this? And so on and so on. I see. So um, all brothers and sisters, please take note. We have to <laughs> make the cover page if you want yes. to do a survey. Okay. Okay. So thank you so much, Dr. Raini, for answering all the questions and for being here with us today to share the knowledge about artificial intelligence. It's very beneficial and fruitful. And I got a lot, a lot, a lot of new knowledge also. 
Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay, next to commemorate today's event, please stay for a moment for the photography session. Okay, dear uh, participants, brothers and sisters, please switch on your camera. Okay, so who, who's going to take the picture? Who's going to print screen? Uh, yeah, I will take the picture. So everyone okay. can open your camera. Anyone want us to wait? We're going to wait for a minute. <laughs> it's okay, Sister Zeti. Okay, I will take the screenshot right now. So, smile. One, two, three. Freestyle. One, two, three. Okay, another, another one. Okay. One, two, three. Freestyle. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, thank you everyone for switching on the camera. Thank you, Doctor, for being here with us. All right, so uh, actually, 